So what's a dummy load and how do we build one? Don't forget to like and subscribe, it will really help my channel, thanks. In this video I'm going to show you what a dummy load is, how to build one, how to calculate the different components and what sort of resistors you're going to need and also show you my own version and one I've built. So what is a dummy load? Now a dummy load is a device which simulates a normal electrical load and from this we can use it for electrical purposes, uh, testing purposes. So for example, say we've got a battery pack and the battery pack puts out 5 volts and can do up to 2 amps say and it's got a 1000 milliamp hour um, capacitance then to check this is actually correct because this might be wrong sometimes they do uh, they say they're wrong if you get the cheap one from China or it could just be that it's degraded over time we're going to need to test it so we need an electrical load which is constantly at say the 2 amps or the 1 amp would be easier um, so from this we have an electrical load which is a simple circuit like so where you've got your resistor and we've got our 5 volts coming in and then obviously the negative here so from this we want to draw 1 amp coming through so that's 1 amp going into the resistor constantly and if it is actually a thousand milliamp hours then of course this will only last one hour and then it will stop if that's correct um, of course it might be less it might be more depends how accurate this number is over there so from this we've got our simple circuit here we know our faults we know we need to draw one amp so what resistor will we use well using Ohm's law which states voltage over current equals resistance you can remember this using the triangle where you've got a triangle like this you've got the volts you've got the current and we've got the resistance so we've got 5 volts we want to divide it by 1 amp which means the resistor needs to be 5 ohms when shopping for a resistor like this, you will see there's different power ratings as well. This is so you don't overheat it or break the resistor itself. So what you need to make sure you do is when you do buy a resistor, you get a power rating that's over the power you're expecting to use. So what's the power we're going to use from this? We're using Watt's law, which states power over voltage equals current. We've got voltage, current and power. This is in watts. What we need to do is do the 5 volts, multiply it by the 1 amp, which equals 5 watts. So whatever we do, if we're buying a resistor, we need to get one that's 5 ohms and can do at least 5 watts of power. And we need to make sure we don't apply any more than 5 volts since that would obviously change the figures and maybe would be less than the wattage allowance which we don't want because then it will just overheat so let's go over another example this is one that I'm actually using myself so we've got our 5 volts power supply coming in we've got our resistor and I'm drawing 0 0.5 amps so 500 milliamps. Um, based on this, the battery pack over here would last two hours. So from this, we need to do to find out the resistor again. Use the same law here. So we do five volts over 0.5 amps, and we get 10 ohms. For the wattage of this, we're going to do five times 0 0.5 amps which equals 2.5 watts so it's a lot less wattage <coughs> and a higher resistor so these will be quite easy to find actually you can get 10 ohm by 10 watt resistors quite cheaply online 
So I'd recommend doing that for this circuit. Using Fusion 360, I was able to design a simple circuit on this. So what we've got here, we've got the USB connector over here. This is USB micro. We've got one load here. We've got the LED next to it, so we know that it's on. We've got the second load here, again an LED and one switch. And then we've got two, LED, two resistors loads here, one LED and a switch here. Um, this is so we can get 0.5 amps, 0.5 amps, 1 amp, and depending on when we switch them on, we can get 0.5, 1, 1.5 or 2 amps. I did also add a connector here, but I don't think I'm going to put this into the final uh, design, went to the PCB. So what we've got, we've got the ground line which goes directly to the resistors, and the negatives of the LEDs. We've got the, uh, the, the 5 volt line here, which is directly put onto the first resistor, so that's constantly on, and then gets switched for the next resistor and again for the final two resistors. Um, to put this into a PCB board, I designed it with the sort of layout I'm planning to do. So we've got the connector here for the micro in, um, and then we've got two switches. So this one turns on these two, which are in parallel. Um, this will create one amp. Uh, we switch on this one, which is 0.5 amps, and then the final one is constantly on. Uh, you've got the three LEDs which represents whether the switch is on or off and which loads are currently on. And then we've got the ground line which just runs through the middle. So using the example for my schematic where I had four in parallel. So we've still got the five volts coming in. Now we've got one resistor which is always on. This is 10 ohms. We have another one. This one is switched. And then we've got two which are in parallel, and these are also switched. On my example in the schematic, I've also added some LEDs. This is purely so I know which ones are on, if that's on or this is on, um, and that one's on. Uh, these are all 10 ohms. So how do we work out the total resistance? and then we can work out what the current's going to be over when I've got this one on, this one on, this one on, or these two on, or those two on, or all four, three on. So how do we do this? It's quite simple, we use the equation, one over the total resistance equals one over resistor one, plus one over resistor two, plus one over resistor three, plus one over resistor four. And if you've got more resistors than me, then you can just obviously carry on until you get to one over resistor N. So in this example, we, they're all 10 ohms, which makes it quite simple to work out. You don't need a calculator for this. So one over resistor T equals one over 10, plus one over 10 plus 1 over 10, plus 1 over 10. From this, that's obviously 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 equals 1 over T, uh, RT. And now we just need to get the resistor, so we're just going to put the 1 over there and simple equation. So resistor T equals 1 over 0 0.4, which equals 2.5 ohms. So that's our total resistance when we've got all of them on. You can use, if you don't know how to do this, you can use a simple calculator online. DigiKey have a really good one um, where you can enter the numbers quite simply. You can just keep adding uh, how many resistors and if you've got more than one you can just add more and if they're different values you can also add those and it'll give you the total resistance out. Back to the drawing, what we've got here now is a total resistance of 2.5 ohms. So with our 5 volts, sorry, 
over the 2.5 ohms, our max current is going to be 2 amps when they're all on. You can obviously work this out if you change the values, so say we get rid of uh, one of the values, so that one's off, then we've only got three. So in that scenario, it will be RT equals one over 0.3, which gives you 3.333 recurring ohms and that would equal 1.5 amps. So we've got that one off, so that's taken out two, and we've got just two on. Then again, that's RT equals one over the two, which gives you five ohms. And then from that, we've got one amp. And if you have both of them off, then you've only got the one resistor, like the first circuit I showed you, which would equal 0.5 of an amp. This way we can switch them on and get uh, four different values coming out. So we can have it with both off. We can get 0.5 amps with this one on. So we'll call that switch one. And this is switch two. Then we switch one on. We can get one amp with switch two on we would get, obviously, that's one amp, plus the 0 0.5, 1.5 amps. And then with both switches on, we can get two amps. So this gives you a very, loads of different like variations from when you're using two switches, which is perfect for what I want to build. Now let's jump straight on to building the final product. Now we finished building it, we've got a simple circuit like this. We've got the resistors here, which are both 10 watts, 10 ohms, three LEDs for the three different states it can be in. So it's either going to have 0.5 on, a, uh, a one amp, uh, another one amp, and then we can just add them up and we get whatever the output is. Two switches on the left here. USB micro there for the input, which is five volts. And then on the back, I've added some extra wires. So I've doubled up the wires here. This is just to ensure that they can draw the right amount of current and they're not gonna get damaged or melt when I think they're quite thin wires, but I need to be able to draw two amps. Um, I think each one of these is rated at 1.4 amps. So having a double up really helps it and keeps it working. We got the resistors in line here for the LEDs and for the LEDs themselves. The two switches, so it's either on or off on these parts. And then I did use the actual resistors um, pins here to actually solder up as well. So does it work? We get a power bank like this one and we need a USB cable. 
which I should have one around. And we plug this into here. As you can see, one of the LEDs is on. This is showing in fact we've got 0.5 of an amp is currently on, which should be this one here. So the top resistor's on, it will start to get a bit warm, obviously, because it's heating up the heat, and we've got the current going through. Then if you want to add another 0.5 of an amp on, you can switch this on. Now we've got two, so we've got 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and so you want to add uh, one amp on top of it, so we've got one amp plus the 0.5 of an amp, so that's 1.5 amps, and now if we have one amp plus 0.5, plus 0.5, we've got two amps. And from this we can control the four different selections of choices. It does turn on automatically, there's no switch, um, for it to just be kept plugged in as soon as you plug it in, it is going to be drawing power. And so now we've got our demo load fully made and usable. It's in a nice case with some readings on so we know what's going to happen. We added the LEDs so we can get a clear view of what's actually being used currently in the current. So when we turn it on, we can see here we've got 0.5 of an amp. And we flip this one on, we've got an extra 0.5 of an amp. So now we've got a total of one amps. If we flip this one on, we've got an extra 1 amp, and so now we've got a total of 1.5 amps. And if you flip this one on, then of course we've got an extra 0.5 of an amp, so now we've got 2 amps in total. So using those two combinations of the switches here, we can get 4 different combinations on the output. Thanks for watching my video, I hope you guys really enjoyed learning how to build a demi load like this. There will be more videos put up, don't forget to like and subscribe for more of these.